Good evening, Internet. Welcome back to another night of Strange and Scary Games. Tonight, we've got The Corruption Within. Um, how did I find this game? It's been a while. I think I saw uh, Daniel Sirachi and Will Shane play it a while back. Uh, I remember the dev being in somebody's chat um, and them being very nice. Uh, so, yeah. I thought that this would be the last game for the week. Uh, and I hope that you enjoy it. Let's get into it. It had been a wonderful week. Camping, hiking, and exploring the countryside with my wife and two children. We hadn't been able to afford a holiday while the kids were growing up, but finally, between my salary and Steph selling some of her paintings, we'd scrabbled together the funds. With two nights to go, we'd planned to spend the afternoon exploring a section of the forest by the lake we hadn't seen yet. At dusk, I was collecting things together while Steph and the kids answered the call of nature. They didn't come back. That'll, uh, that'll ruin your vacation. I spent hours searching, calling, to no avail. Frantically, I headed towards the only sign of civilization I'd seen. A grand mansion with a mountain behind it and a lake at the front. I'd heard of this new invention called a telephone. Whoever owned the mansion was surely rich enough to own one, or at least have some horses. I scrambled over old tree roots to get to the mansion. Either a telephone or some horses. Rumors and superstitions were rife about this part of the country, but I put those down to silly old wives' tales designed to scare children. I reluctantly began to wonder if there was some truth to them. Tales of ghosts and fell beasts didn't bother me. I didn't believe in such things. The stories of Edgar Allan Poe were entertaining, but nothing more. It was the evil people were capable of that worried me. One of my um, advisors in undergrad was a Poe scholar. I reached the mansion and hoped to find help there. At the very least, someone should be able to aid me in some way. If they couldn't, there was no hope of aid from any other source, unless I found my way back to civilization and the police conducted a full search of the countryside. But it would be too late. This mansion was my only hope. No pressure. All right, and we're in it. Uh... <clears throat> This is an impressive building indeed. It must be a rich family that lives here. Even though it's late, there seem to be some lights on, so I guess at least someone is still awake. After a brief moment, a man opened the door. Just what is your business of the, at this ungodly hour, sir? Please, my good man, let me in. My family have gone missing and I need help. Do you have an invitation from a member of the family? What? No, I don't. My family have gone missing, and... If you do not have a formal invitation, then I can't allow you to enter the house. There are no exceptions. I bid you goodbye, sir. Now what am I going to do? Was that Steph? I'd better go check it out. The scream seems to have come from the southwest. Not knowing where I was heading, but following the sounds of the screams, I ended up somewhere in the forest. Then, I beheld the sight that made my blood run cold. There was a man hanged from a tree. As I stared at the grisly scene, a woman approached me. Sir, I, I was sent to find you and give you this invitation. She hands me an invitation card. She is clearly shaken by the sight of the dead man. Give it to the butler and he will let you in. The young lady stares in horror at the hanged man. Do you know who this is? Yes, sir. His name was Paul. He was a footman. I liked him. He was always kind to me, and he was quite a dizzy, despite not having much education. Lady Charlotte heard you at the mansion door talking to Giles and told me to come via the servant's door to the forest and find you. She has seen a woman and two children who appeared to be lost. But then I saw Paul here, and I... I... We must report this to the authorities. My family. Someone has seen my family? She is still staring at the body, unable to tear her eyes away. Shouldn't we cut him down, or, or even bury him? We can't yet. The police will need to see the crime scene without any interference. 
I suppose so. I need to rush back. I know it seems cold given the circumstances, but I do not wish to receive punishment for failing in my duties. The punishments can be severe. You still have work at this time? It must be past midnight by now. The family I work for have unusual habits. Lady Denison suffers from, uh, with lunacy. She becomes highly agitated during the full moon and often creates havoc, so the family have got into the habit of staying up late to deal with her. I see. What about the invitation? That's a house rule. Nobody enters without an invitation, even if accompanied by a servant or family member other than Lord Denison himself. He is a law unto himself. I am sorry, but I really must get back now. Paul, rest in peace. I will come make sure you get a proper burial. The young woman, weeping uncontrollably, runs back towards the mansion. I am left with the only cor I am left with only the corpse swinging gently on the rope, for a company. Seems like an ordin ordinary sort of rope, expertly knotted. If this was murder, this man was not the perpetrator's first victim. It's too tight for me to untie. So we need something that can uh, uh, cut the rope. A few things to bear in mind. This game saves your progress automatically. Text display speed can be changed in the options screen from regular default option to instant. To return to the main menu, press escape. To open or close your inventory, press the space bar or click the middle mouse button. Space bar or middle mouse. Left click on an item from your inventory to hold it in hand. You can then use it on the objects in the world by left clicking. To return to your inventory, click the right mouse button or open your inventory again. Some objects may require a closer inspection, so don't be shy to interact with them a few times. To move around the world, click on the direction arrows that are shown on the bottom right. Alternatively, you can use the Wasted keys. Hotspot indicator can be turned on in the options screen. To replay this tutorial, press H at any time. That's it. This tutorial is finished. Keep on adventuring. I wonder if we should turn on hotspot indicator? A sturdy looking shed door. The door won't budge more than a couple of inches. There's an adjustable spanner on the floor which I can just barely reach. I'll take it. What is it? Ah, spanner. The happy days we spent hiking in those mountains already seemed so long ago. I'm not sure what the wheelbarrow has been used for, but it has a dark red staining inside. I fear gardening was not its only use. This tree stands out impressively, even in the sometime dense woodland. I'm guessing it may have even been around long enough to have started life when George III was on the throne. Dense foliage is all around, creating a safe and advent and and advantageous environment for the many squirrels and other small denizens living here. I run straight back to the mansion, not stopping to explore the forest and lakeside area. That will wait for later, should the need arise. After a brief moment, a man opens the door. I have an invitation from Lady Charlotte to enter the mansion. Although Lady Charlotte does the most extraordinary things at times, I am not going to simply take your word for it. You will have to provide proof. Here's my proof. I see. This appears to be an order. I am not aware that Lady Charlotte has left the house tonight, so I suppose she sent a servant to do her bidding. Do come in, sir. I shall take you through to the lounge and fetch her ladyship. Please wait here whilst I fetch Lady Ch uh, Charlotte. Sounds of whispers come from behind the door. You may leave us now, Giles. Very good, my lady. Lady Charlotte studies me keenly before speaking. I see you got my invitation. Jolly good. Thank you for your kindness and hospitality, madam. Of course, of course. Do you happen to know something of my family's whereabouts? My wife and two young children, one boy and one girl. Oh, did I see him? Hmm, I think maybe I did. You mean you don't know whether you saw them? Oh yes, now that I think of it, I did. So where are they? Patience, my good man. Patience? I'm desperate to find them. I'm feeling woozy. I need to go and lie down. You may search the mansion if you like. I have nothing to hide. Or perhaps I do have something to hide, but I want you to find it. Lady Charlotte gives a small and slightly delirious laugh. I don't remember when and where I saw them. I've not been feeling myself lately. A loud bang followed by a, loud gro a low groaning is heard from the east. Did you hear that? Your imagination is getting the better of you. This old house is full of strange sounds. That was no random creak created by the wind in an old house. That was someone in pain. 
Oh, dear heart, are you a writer? You have the most vivid imaginings. As for me, I need to rest. I shall see you later, no doubt. I'm sure I heard something, and I'm sure people around here know more than they're letting on. Time to investigate. I must keep a tight hold of my emotions and remain as objective as I can. My family's future depends on it. Within. Get inside the mansion. Okay, you guys can see that. One of those newfangled gramophone players. We can't afford one ourselves, but this family has the latest technology wonders. Has the latest technological wonders. Oh, I've been talking too much today. An oil painting of the lake outside the mansion, I think. Probably by a local artist rather than a famous one. The lake at nighttime is rather ominous, as I found out in the last few years, although my panic, uh, although in my panic I barely noticed the time. The drink cabinet is well stocked with wines and spirits of various vintages. It's securely locked. It seems that the lock is new with some evidence of damage repaired. Perhaps there is a thief in the house. A roaring fire heats the room. There's nothing quite like a log fire. Let's see now. There doesn't seem to be anything unusual about the painting. As far as I can tell, there's nothing behind it. Grandfather Clock always adds an air of elegance to the foyer. Personally, I prefer the casing to be stained or varnished rather than painted, but I can't deny this clock looks rather distinguished. A rather strange painting of a man, which I believe in, a new t in the newfangled style called Impressionism. I can't touch that, I can't touch that. A portrayal of a bat, one of nature's most mysterious mammals. A rather bizarre choice of a painting to place in a foyer on account of their unsavory reputation. The gas lamp is unlit. With that huge chandelier, you, would th you wouldn't think another light was necessary. Ah. Uh, in my rush to get back to the mansion earlier, I didn't explore the area outside. I should scour for clues. Um. Oh, I heard someone come in. Come in. I thought it may be Charlotte. I'm afraid not. I'm a visitor, looking for my wife and children who have gone missing. I'm so sorry. I have lost children myself. I had hoped Charlotte had come to play the piano, so I could accompany her on the harp. It calms me somewhat. Lady, I'm sorry for your loss. It was years ago. Years ago. I'm Isabel, by the way. Pleased to meet you. I am Samuel, my lady. Samuel Taylor. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. Charlotte, is she here? I hope to play on the harp while she played piano. It cleanses my soul. She plays very well. But she's not here. I will go. I think she is so caught up in her own grief that the fact my family is missing didn't even register with her. A bit of an odd fish, really, but I suppose that's understandable. According to the tiny plaque, the painting is called The Purple Rose of Cairo, Artist Unknown. That statue is huge, almost twice the height of a man. I would presume, given its location, that the statue is of a famous composer, but it's not one I recognize. Maybe someone local, or even a family member. I have rarely heard the instrument played, but I am told it creates a beautiful melody. Uh, it creates very beautiful mel melodies when in the hands of a skilled harpist. Grand piano sits at one side of the room. I can play simple melodies if I have the sheet music in front of me. I seem to have no head for remembering them, as uh, some people can. It's a dreadful night. The bookcase is dedicated to the books for uh, this bookcase is dedicated to books for children. I've never understood why people hunt animals and put their stuffed heads up on the wall for people to gawk at. What a sad end for such a majestic creature. An unlit oil lamp. I'm not going to carry a bulk, bulky oil lamp around for no reason. Besides, someone else might need it. A selection of popular novels, including works by Dickens, Thackeray, Trollope, and the Bronte sisters, and others. I'm actually quite good at billiards when I get the chance to play. Not surprising, I suppose, considering an eye for angles and dis dis distances is important to my job as an architect. There's no time to practice my potting and caroming skills. I can hear the clock strike one. There's a long, thin pipe coiled up here. It must have been used to top up the pool at some point. It seems to be a surplus to requirements. I've taken the rubber hose. 
My knowledge of Greek mythology is limited, but I would say that these unclad ladies are nymphs. The one on the far end is holding a cluster of grapes. The bronze feels smooth to the touch. Why are you touching it? I just wanted to take the grapes. All right, so we have a hose. What can we do with the hose? Grand stairway befitting of such an opulent mansion. As I'm about to go up the stairs, Giles blocks my way. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't allow you to go upstairs while some family members are in bed. But Lady Charlotte told me I could go anywhere in the house. Sir, I'm afraid that it would be improprietous of me. I cannot allow it. I just can't like the color green, but this armchair also seems oddly out of place. The rest of the foyer is set quite symmetrically. It may not be of particular significance, but it's highly noticeable to someone in my light of work. Comfortable looking armchair. I guess some visitors are asked to wait in the foyer for a long time if they need seats. Can't use the spanner with that. A gaslit chandelier. This family must be extremely affluent. I've seen chandeliers in some of the grand houses I've worked in, but never have seen gaslighting in a house before. Chair looks very comfy. There is no time to sit and dawdle. Although I am very tired, it is not the time to sit down. Uh, I guess let's go back outside. At the top of the pillar is a set of runes. I'm not sure what language they are. When runes are not simply carved into the stone, each one is separately embossed. You can push them down, but nothing happens. This wagon is a strange size. It looks a little small for a horse, but large for a human to pull. Though I'm sure if I had a good enough reason, I could move it easily enough. Perhaps it was designed for smaller animals like ponies to pull. Every so often, I can see the metallic glint when the moonlight shines on the fern. Reaching into the undergrowth, I find a battered, perfectly, serv first perfectly serviceable flathead screwdriver. The door looks to be the sturdiest part of the building. Everything else looks like it may fall apart at, any, at a moment's notice. Looking in, I can see it was once a comfortable abode, probably for a high-class servant like a gamekeeper. Now it is completely derelict and has clearly been emptied for some time. I'm not going to try to enter through the window. It'd be unsafe on many levels. These were evidently where the horses were led out of. The stable doors seem to have been damaged and warped by fire. I can see the remains of horses inside. The ostler and stable bo uh, boy would have entered this way. Despite the darkness, I can see enough to know nothing has been left inside apart from ashes. There are also some horse bones. Looks like one or two more horses were trapped here in a fire. How tragic. All right. Roof has definitely seen better days and has some signs of fire damage. Water over there looks extremely deep. If it contains any secrets, I suspect they will have to remain a secret. These rocks shooting out of the water make me feel uneasy. I feel like they shouldn't be here. Even though it's not far from the shore, I don't think I should risk trying to jump onto it. Firstly, I can't think of any benefit of doing it, and it's glistening with a sheen of water. One slip and a bump in my head, and that would be the end of me. Another rock seemingly defined gravity at the surface of the water. The ground rises and falls sharply around it, leaving just enough for the rock to sit on. This rock appears to have been placed here. I can't be sure if it was an entirely aesthetic decision or if there was some other reason for it. Rock is heavy. I have no reason to push it around. That will serve no purpose. Lake is dark and mysterious. From what I can see, which is admittedly little, it seems to get it deep extremely quickly around this point. Rock jutting out of the surface of the water makes me wonder if this man-made lake, uh, but hastily completed with areas of ground higher than they should be. It is possible the effect is deliberate.
Alright, so I already don't know what I'm supposed to do. Every so often I think I can see something shining, but it's probably just a reflection. Need sheet music. This light highlights the charms of a particularly beautiful statue. Uh, I don't know how I could attach the hose to that. That's not quite right. I keep trying to convince Steph that it's worth us trying to save for a grandfather clock once I fully qualify as an architect. Brass plate bearing the message a gift from the Earl of Sussex is held in place by four screws. Alas, no, we have no real means of communication with the outside world. The family likes being in seclusion. We did have horses, but not for some years now. I am indeed, sir. Have been for many years now. I go by the name of Giles. I didn't know butlers were allowed to drink while on duty, but I can smell whiskey on his breath. A little more than two score years, sir. I started out as a stable boy. Would you believe, back when the family still had horses. Of course, I was a mere wee lad back then. A mere wee lad? Are you Scottish? Haha, <laughs> you caught the twang, did you? The answer is yes, but barely. I was a wee baron when I came to England, and I rarely see my Scottish kin. Every, uh, every now and then the old language slips out, though. Do you know anything about the hang of a man in the nearby woods? Gracious me. No, sir, I do not. Shame to have yet another death in the area. What do you mean, another death? Ah, it seems that this is the most unfortunate place, sir. Many deaths all over the last few years, or maybe suspected deaths is a better expression. Possibly just disappearances. I mean, who really knows? What do you know about the deaths? I know nothing at all, and that's what I'll tell anyone. He clearly knows something, but he'll never tell me. Have you seen a woman till two children enter the house? I have not... Someone else could have let them in, I suppose, but I find it extremely unlikely. With the few staff we have available, it's not like anyone is looking for extra work. I shall return later. Goodbye. Better not do that while the butler can see me. Alright. So I need to get the butler to, to leave somehow. What a wonderful sofa. I wish we could afford something like this for our house, or indeed have enough room for it. Maybe one day. Looks posh, but I'm not keen on the color. Not in, in, not in an indoor setting, anyway. Greens are the wallpaper of nature, not of man. Found a coin down the back of the sofa. What a stroke of good fortune. Since Lady Charlotte was so unhelpful, I think I'll keep this, as I expect it will be more useful than she was. Can't use the spanner with that. Oh, here we go. A Welsh dresser, plates, bowls, and other crockery is stored here. I have always found taxidermied animals rather upsetting, as if we are making a celebration of death rather than life. The family are certainly fond of this area, not only living here, but filling their home with paintings of the locality, perhaps an indication that they have made the small part of England their entire world. This cabinet must hold all the cutlery. The dining table and accompanying chairs are surprisingly austere, concerning how grand the mansion is. Clearly, they take a rather pragmatic attitude towards food. The landscape oil painting adjoins the wall, from the local area, I would say, judging by the very identifiable an identifiable plant. There's a door at the top of the stairs. No one answers my knocking. However, I hear footsteps on the other side and someone's breathing. I wonder where the stairs lead to. Hello, miss. 
Hello to you too, sir. I'm Francesca, the kitchen maid and parlor maid too, since we hardly have any maids left. Wait, I recognize your voice. You were in the forest by the man that hanged. I was told to go and find you, sir. It wasn't my idea. I do what I'm told. Obedience and sometimes rewarded, but disobedience is always punished. What happened to the other maids? I was told they all went away for personal reasons, but I fear something terrible happened to them. People acting strange, terrible noises at night. I, I can't say nothing more, sir. What do you think of the family you work for? They have always been eccentric but kind, sir. Though in recent years there is more eccentricity and less kindness. How long have you worked here? Seventeen years, sir. I was brought here when I was ten. I was an orphan with no one to care for me, a kid with dead foreign parents living on the streets of London, until Lady Isabel was kind enough to bring me here. What can you tell me of other staff? I like Molly and Gary. I steer clear of Giles when he's up the pole. He can get a bit handsy if you know what I mean. Penelope, poor thing, completely lost her mind when the children died. Is there any truth to the tales of fell creatures roaming this part of the country? Not that I have ever seen, sir, though I have ter heard terrible noises. What kind of noises? Howling of anguish, it seems to me sometimes. Whether human or animal, I do not truly know, though my heart tells me they are human. That's terrible. Have you told anyone about this? I quickly learned to keep my mouth shut, sir. People told me I was a silly girl to say such things. I'll speak with you later. Bottle of Port Ellen whiskey. There's just a, li a bit left in it. Can't take the bottle, even if it's nearly finished. Certainly not without asking the kitchen maid first. Can I have the bottle of whiskey since there's not much left in it? It's only leftovers, but it was still given to the servants in kindness. You ain't, you ain't having it for nothing. Can give you this coin as payment for that unfinished bottle of whiskey. Three pence. Well, not to be sniffed at considering my paltry wages. It's a deal. Take it. It is only now that I realize I left my wallet at the campsite. I've taken the bottle of whiskey. Who are you, child? I'm begging your par pardon, Lordship. I'm Molly. What work do you do here? I'm a scullery maid, your Lordship, though I clean the bedchambers too. How long have you been working here? Since I was a child, your Lordship. I'm not too certain of my age when I was brought here. I... I don't remember my parents very much, but Lord and Lady Denison were kind enough to take me in to give me a job, food, and lodgings. What do you think of the family you work for? Please don't ask me such things, your lordship. I would have no home without the family's kindness, but no, please do not ask me this. Please, if you know something important about the family in this mansion, you must tell me. I, I'm sorry, I cannot tell you anything more. She seems to know something, but is too scared to tell me. Whether it's being scared of losing her job or something more, I cannot tell. Do you have a telephone in the house or any horses? Alas, no, your lordship. The family being in seclusion, we did have horses, but not for some years now. My wife and children are missing. Have you seen them? It saddens me to say I have not, your lordship. What do you know of the dead man hanging in the forest? Dead man in the forest? How horrible. But I know nothing of this, your lordship. Must be a murder to get. Uh, these must be a murder to get clean. I hear scullery maids are expected to rub sand into them with their bare hands. Running water is essential to keeping everything clean. The magnificence of the rest of the building clearly doesn't extend to the servants' areas. Quick check reveals these pots to contain spices and biscuits. Various cleaning implements are kept here, I presume. Uh, is there anything else that we can grab real quick? Not sure what's in the barrel. Perhaps it's simply used as a makeshift table. Very much a staple part of our diet, potatoes. It makes me shudder to think how terrible the Irish potato famine must have been. The oven is equipped with a gas cooker by the uh, look of it. I wonder if normal folks will ever be able to afford these. A handy implement for chasing away rodents. No rodents nearby to chase away. These look like Lady Henniker apples to me, I probably so probably used for cooking rather than eating raw. Although some do like the sharp taste. Pot of cold gravy, possibly waiting to be reheated, although I doubt the family would be very impressed by that idea. An ornamental bowl containing grapes. Presumably it gets put out when the family wants it, but otherwise kept out of the way. Or maybe the servants get to eat the grapes once they look less appetizing. Very basic crockery, supposedly for the servants to use. I have no idea how anyone can reach these pots. Maybe they have a ladder to, uh, or hook on a long pole. I have some whiskey if you're interested. Hmm. It's a mere snifter, but it's from a good distiller, yes? I'll take it. I'll go and enjoy this somewhere private. I won't ask where you got this from. Just what did happen to the, the horses? The stable appears to have fire damage. 
It was a tragedy, but out of respect for the family, I cannot go into details. Out of respect for Lady Denison in particular. Poor Jason, the groom, and Jack, the stable boy, lost their lives trying to save the horses. Sadly, none survived. What did Lady Denison do? She and Jason were having collie shingles again. They argued a lot about the state of the Empire. And things got out of hand. A lamp got knocked over. The family hushed it all up, of course. Did Lady Denison argue with many of the staff? Oh, she argues with everyone. She has a, to put it politely, touch of lunacy about her. It's been getting worse the last few years. She mostly stays in her bedroom now. Everyone's happier that way. Do you know much about this mansion? It's a very uh, old building built on ancient ruins of a Roman villa. If you can find him and he's in a talkative mood, Lord Denison knows much more uh, than I or indeed anyone else does. Can you tell me anything of the Denison family? The Denison family has a noble heritage dating back to Edward III's reign and have lived in this area since Charles I was on the throne. The current lord and lady are very traditional in their views, other family members less so. Is there anything you can tell me about the other servants? What can I say? Gary is amiable but, amiable but dim. Francesca is doing her best to be a cook. Molly is a sweet girl who deserves better than this place, and Penelope lost her mind when the children died. Don't ask me more about them. I would have thought a mansion of this size would have many staff, not just five. You'd be right, and we had about twenty staff here, once. But so many have died over the years and not been replaced. I'll sh I shall return later. Goodbye. And off the butler has gone upstairs to drink his whiskey. Alright, so let me have this. Gently, I unscrew the metal plate from the clo clock. Inside a small pocket is a sheet of very old paper with a diary entry on it. Last page is signed by Samuel Pepys. Does his family even know of its, its existence? Decision time. When you get back to civil civilization, what will you do with the paper? Which seems to be a missing page from Pepys' famous diary. Uh, send it to a museum. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? We still have the screwdriver, we have a garden hose, and we have the spanner. Furniture blocks away to the left. The door is locked. A mountain of nighttime, very moody, possibly a local mountain. Sir, sir, I must tell you something. What is it? Or rather, I must show you something. Please meet me in the lounge as soon as you can. Uh, is the lounge downstairs? Yeah. What was it you wanted to show me? Not here. We need to go back to where Paul is. He's hanging in the forest. I don't know if I could trust you. I didn't know if I could trust you, but I've been observing your actions. You genuinely seem to be focused on finding your lost family. I didn't know if you were simply another of Lady Charlotte's gentleman friends, playing some sort of role play. I can assure you most definitely I'm not. I only want to find my wife and children. Sir, my friend Paul is obviously the victim of some evil. He will not be the lost unless someone puts a stop to it. Unfortunately, the police have little interest in coming out here. We're many miles of tough terrain away from the nearest police station, and since the horses died, we have no real way of contacting the outside world. You seem like an honest and intelligent man. I beg you to help me find out what is happening and stop it. I promise you, I will do what I can, but my priority is to find my family. Sir, I believe they are in danger from the same evil. I don't know whom I can trust at the mansion other than Molly. As for the family, Lord Charles was questioned by, at length by police after his children died. The family has always claimed both deaths were tragic accidents. Maybe they were. Lady Denison is not a sound mind, and Lord Denison is, well, an, enigm an, an, an enigma. Giles is too fond of his whiskey, and who knows what he might do under the influence. And Gary is a good man at heart, but simply of head, and, but simple of head, and may be manipulated. Who knows what any of them are capable of? Until you came here, I felt there was no hope. But if you felt something evil was going on, even if the police would do nothing, why did you not leave yourself? Surely you don't feel safe here. There ain't nowhere I could go, really, being an uneducated orphan and all. We're practically prisoners here, miles from the nearest town, and would have to get the would have to get there on foot. Francesca's manner of speech is becoming more like the street language she grew up with. Perhaps it's because of the emotional stress she's under, or due to her feeling more comfortable in my presence now that she's decided I can be trusted. But that's not the only reason. I had a friend once, one of the other kitchen maids she was. She came to the mansion within a couple of weeks of each other. We came to the mansion within a couple of weeks of each other. Maisie, the name was. And we became fast friends almost straight away. But we started to grow suspicious, Maisie even more so than me. She decided to run away, wanted me to come with her, she did. But as I was too scared of going back to the streets as a beggar, so I stayed here. She did go, but she never wrote. She promised faithfully to write, and never did. I'm convinced something happened to her. There could be a number of reasons why she didn't write. 
Not Maisie. She always found a way, she did. Walking across the hills for a hundred miles, no problem for her. She was as fit as a fiddle. Something was done to her, something horrible. And maybe not only to her, but I ain't got no proof. And then there's the noises, awful noises, like people in pain. Dull, muffled noises, sometimes in the house, sometimes over here. Francesca points out a path hidden behind some undergrowth, then leads me to a rock face at the end of the path. I believe that someone from the mansion is part of the heinous plot. The servants are discouraged from coming out here, but since Maisie left, I have made sure to find out as much as I could without getting caught. This may be important to your efforts to save your family. I believe they may be caught up in some despicable intrigue. I must get back, but I wish you success. I can just faintly detect a hollow in the rock face. Uh, spanner? The adjustable spanner is versatile, but not that versatile. Screwdriver? Has the person who did this captured Steph and the kids? Why did that girl insist on me investigating this? What strange happenings are going on? Too many questions for which I don't have the... I may regret finding the answers to. I, if I have a use for the wheelbarrow, I can come get it, but I'm not looking around with me. Okay. Mountains look dark, dark, distant, and ominous from this angle. So different from my impression of them this afternoon. Your lordship, I have been trying to find you. You must be absolutely exhausted, and I expect you have walked my many miles in your search. Please, let me give you something to eat and drink. I suddenly realize just how tired and hungry I am. Perhaps a quick snack and drink would reinvigorate me. You are very kind. I would be grateful for whatever you could spare. Please come with me, your lordship. I'm afraid I hadn't much, but I heated up for, your, for you, your lordship. I have some trout, potatoes, and carrots. The trout is delicious. Is it from the lake outside? Yes, your lordship. Lord Charles is a keen fisherman. He really hates it when Lady Charlotte takes a swim. He says it scares off the fish. I can imagine. Not as much as he hates it when, he sw when she swims naked, of course. Er, yes, quite. Despite the conversation taking such a strange turn, I feel most refreshed and energized. I am ready to continue my search. I hate working through the nights during the full moon. Gary seems to enjoy it, though. I don't know what he, uh, uh, that he ever sleeps. I think he'll be by the stables, probably pretending the horses are still alive. Uh, I guess let's go find Gary. Oh. Hello, my good man. Who are you? Hello, mister. My name is Gary. What do you do here? I'm the first footman, mister. How many footmen are there? Just one now, but I'm still the first. What can you tell me about the other staff? Well, Giles is a buffoon and likes his drink too much. Molly is a nice enough girl. And Franny is a bit of a raspberry, if you know what I mean. But do not let her catch you looking at her. Tora laurels. At her Tora laurels. Or you'll be in for some mouth pie. How very improper. Does he have no manners? Is there anything that you can tell me about the family who employ you? On account of my father, his lordship has kept me on. Very kind of him. Please do not ask me about the ladies, Edith and Charlotte. They think I am like dirt beneath their expensive shoes. Is there anything you can tell me about the mansion? Ah, yes I can. Many secrets of this mansion has. Including one of the great interests to me personally. Meet me in the dining room later and I'll tell you about it. Do you know what happened to the horses? Yes, burnt alive they were. Poor things. Edith started a fire. Not that she meant to. People stay away from the stable. So I go there to a lot to be alone. Good sir, my family have gone missing. Have you by any chance seen them? I'm afraid I have not. I'm sorry. Do you know about the man found hanged in the forest? Mister, all sorts of terrible things go on here. But I am always try told to keep quiet. Do not listen to Gary. He is simple, they say. What sort of terrible things? People vanish, screaming, crying, people in much pain, but nobody ever listens to Gary. Who tells you to keep quiet? The rich folks, mainly. They think I am a wooden spoon who makes up stories. I'd better go now. Uh, I guess let's go back upstairs. Locked. 
It's a famous explorer, Stephen Don. He made his name investigating ruins in Egypt and Abyssinia. He later became obsessed with the fate of Atlantis. The artist signed his name as Kippensoap. Must be Dutch. This painting is called A Woman from the New World. It appears to be ever so slightly askew. I wonder. What? Who's there? Someone was watching me. Whoever they were, they're gone now. Uh, a Peddler of Scars by Connor Mountain. The man in the painting is rigorously wearing his scarf around his shoulders. Musical box with a picture of a mountain on the lid. Unfortunately, the music won't play since there's no handle to crank. Bed looks old, but doesn't show signs of having been used recently. Simple and convenient place to store some clothes. Drawers are empty with the exception of a nail file. I've taken it. I can't make up my mind as to whether this teddy bear is adorable or terrifying. No wonder how long this plaything has been sitting here unused. William and then Sophie had one similar to this. There is also a ball which is covered with dust. I wonder if the damage not being repaired is due to this house being so far away from anyone, or due to negligence. The parrots are nicely ornamental and go along with the color scheme of this room, but that scheme makes the whole room feel colder. A book about botany opens the page with flowers that look just like the ones I've seen by the lake, but none of the var varieties mentioned are purple. A book about geometry and trigonometry. I learned this stuff years ago when I started training to be an architect. Even though it's interesting, I'm not about to steal a child's school book. Blackboard contains an eclectic mix of mathematical examples, including the quadratic equation. If these were for young children, they must have been prodigies, or their teacher was unrealistic. Topographical map of the Great Britain area and Ireland. Uh, what do I have? I have a simple nail file. Why are you sleeping here, child? Uh, I sleep wherever I can find space, not being used, your lordship. Hopefully by the embers of the fire to keep out the chill of late. Poor thing, I know servants often don't have much of a life, but this sounds worse than usual. Do you know anything of your own family, your parents? As you can see, your lordship, I am half cast. I am led to believe that my father was an English nobleman and my mother an African slave woman. I do not know anything beyond this. Accomplish nothing this is worth a shot. All right, then. Isabel is sitting sobbing on the stairwell. Isabel, what's wrong? Charlotte has lost her sheet music of the tune we always play together. She was so angry, though not at me, I think. The music seems to make her happy, too, though she always disappears afterwards. If I find it, I will let you know. Is there anything else I can do for you? Poetry helps me calm down, too, but the collection by Wordsworth that I love has been misplaced, too. It wasn't in that games room when I looked. Okay, I'll see if I can find it. There's a book of poetry in a small shelf under the desk. I think this is the book Isabel is looking for. Here's the book of poetry you wanted. Oh, thank you. I will go to the music room and read it. It calms me. Goodbye for now, Isabel. Upstairs, gained access to the second floor. I made it to the second floor. If my family is somewhere in this house, it must be here then. Painting of American frontiersman AGG and his loyal chinchilla, Fluffy. I can hear heavy snoring. It sounds like Giles. Guess the whiskey combined with the late hour knocked him out. I'll leave him be. A large, pointless vase sits in the corridor. This uh, paint has faded off in different spots due to the passage of time. 
There's nothing inside. Uh, what do you think you're doing in here, sir? I mean you no harm. I'm trying to find my missing family. I was given permission to enter the house by Lady Charlotte. The house, perhaps, but not my private quarters, surely. I truly am sorry to disturb you, but I believe my family are in danger. If I could only ask you a few questions. This is madness. Charlotte's gone too far. Ask and then be gone. Who are you? I am the children's nurse and educator. My name is Penelope. Where are the children? The children are... are... There's no sign that any children have been here for some years. If the children are gone, why are you still here? No, the children will be back. Nothing bad happened to the children. The horror did not come. It didn't happen. This poor woman is clearly deluded. When did the children go missing? It has been weeks since I saw the children, or months, maybe years, but they will come back. My heart knows this. They will return, and they will be whole, unharmed. I wonder just what happened in this place. What can you tell me about the family that owns this mansion? Lord and Lady Denison were very kind, very kind. Lady Charlotte, I don't know very well. I find her rather intimidating. Can you tell me anything about the other servants? Giles is usually half rats. Gary's nice, but a bit slow in the head. Francesca and Molly are okay, but neither are my chickaboo exactly. She's shockingly forthright in her views. Do you have a best friend? A chickaboo? To be truthful, I preferred spending time with children than adults. Their minds are so much purer. How I wish the children were still here. But nothing bad has happened to them. Nothing bad. This very capable woman completely goes to pieces when the children are mentioned. Do you know anyone? Do you know of anyone missing from the household recently? So many people have gone missing over the years, but Paul the Footman is the latest. There have been a lot of people going missing? Oh yes, so many. Wouldn't surprise me if the local butcher's bag's mystery didn't contain human flesh now and then. She seems remarkably unperturbed about the possibility of dead people ending up in sausages people eat. My own wife and children have gone missing. Have you seen them? Poor little mites. Nothing will, uh, nothing will happen to the children, though. I'm sure no harm uh, come to the children. They will return someday. Clearly, any mention of children causes her to become hysterical. This line of questioning won't help me. For merely hang clothes on, or perhaps she makes her own clothes. Royal blue. Swivel vanity mirror. So maybe I can get her out of the room somehow. Just what in the blazes are you doing in our room? Well, what have you got to say for yourself, men? Sorry to disturb on you, sir. I meant no dis disrespect. I was invited to your home. The impertinence. Oh, I suppose you're another of my aunt's friends. Two doors down is the one you want. You must understand me, sir. My family have disappeared and I am searching for them. Oh, well then, you will not find them here. Uh, nor have I seen nor heard them. Might I inquire as your identity? I am Charles, the son of Lord Denison and husband of Isabel. Heir to this mansion one day, for what it's worth. I met your wife earlier, sir. I'm so sorry to hear you lost your children. Yes, awful business, awful. Poor Izzy has never come close to recovering, as you probably realized when you spoke to her. How did your children die? Terrible accidents, both of them. What can you tell me of the staff here? We don't have enough servants, really, but you must take what you can get these days. The servants we have are unremarkable, but seem loyal. Did you have more servants in the years gone by? Indeed we did, but it's difficult to keep good staff these days. We are so far away from everything here, you see, but there is safety in distance. I understand you enjoy fishing. Yes, indeed I do. It helps me relax no end. I'm afraid I do have a rather short few sometimes. It's fortunate you have your own uh, lake to fish in. It's one of the best things about this mansion. I thought living here would bring me peace, but it seems to have caused me ceaseless unease instead. What is it about the mansion that makes you uneasy? Honestly, I could not say. It began even before my sons, Jonathan and Arthur, died, leaving me without an heir. What happened to your sons? I do not wish to talk about it. The memories are too painful. Dalmatian looking pleadingly at the viewer, the sort of painting adored by many dog lovers. Pike reads Portrait of Vashti, the best dog anyone ever had. Two-part dresser with a mirror. Since losing her children, I would hazard a guess that Isabel sees sad eyes looking back at, back at her every time she looks at this. There's not anything else that we can like really explore. The fine weave in this feels amazing. Such artisanship is most impressive. Nice, comfortable bed made with rosewood. Bedroom door. Unlike most other doors in this house, this one is locked. Table with a drawer in it. Seems oddly placed out here in the corridor. I can feel switches of some kind underneath the drawer. This must be a locking mechanism.
I'm not going to solve it by guesswork or brute force. Hopefully there's a clue somewhere. Very moody painting of some caves. I'm a little out claustrophobic, so I'm not very keen on caves. I hope you don't mind me coming in like this. Of course not, dear boy. I told you earlier you could explore the mansion. Though I have to admit, I'm a little surprised to you in my boudoir. My apologies. It's just that you said you knew something of my family. I do recall seeing a woman, a boy, and a girl out in the forest earlier when I was looking out my window. Did you see where they went? Alas, no, they did seem to be coming towards the mansion, but after that I don't know, I'm afraid. Then I'm going to focus my search in and around the mansion. Thank you for your help. Footlocker, it is a strange thing for a lady to have in her bedroom. This seems to be an army issue, an officer's travel chest, if I'm not mistaken. Shouldn't, not while Lady Charlotte is in the room. It's a drop uh, well dresser made of walnut by the look of it. A uh, wonderful piece of furniture. What a beautiful painting of ballerina. Was this Lady Charlotte in her younger days, perhaps? It's no Degas. No Degas, but it's a very eye-catching style. Tub chair with a soft leather covering. What are we doing here? Do you have anything else? Can you tell me a bit about yourself? I moved into this mansion a few years after my husband died. I have exceptionally good eyesight. I love music and new experiences. That is all. I hear you play the piano. Oh yes, I love to play. Sadly, I've lost the sheet music I play along with Isabel on the harp. Poor thing, she suffered terribly when her children died, but she finds peace in the music. It's all in the fingers, you know. It's all in the fingers. Fingers are amazing things, don't you think? The digits on your hand can cause such pleasure or such pain. Fingers little, middle, ring, or four, and thumb together made music I adore. Take my leave of you, madam. Help! I am in the presence of a stranger. I fear that I am ter in terrible danger. I didn't mean to. What are you doing here? Who are you? Why are you here? Are you a thief? Come to steal Lady Denison's jewels? Yes, you'd like to get your hands on my jewels, wouldn't you, vagrant? Just what is the meaning of this intrusion? You have me in a great panic and confusion. No, really, I'm only here to... Whatever I say, she just continues to yell uncontrollably. Before I get a chance to make my ex exit, a man whom I presume to be Lord Denison enters the room. Just what in the blazes is the meaning of this? Please, sir, I can explain. Later, lad. Lottie told me she had invited a guest, though I must say I didn't expect you to wander into our bedroom. I'm sorry, sir. My plight is desperate, as my wife and child have gone missing. I fear it has caused me to take liberties I would not normally dream of. I see. If I can help later, then I will. However, first I need to calm down my dear wife. Please leave us for, for now. Please leave us for now. This man's voice sounds similar to the voice coming from one of the locked rooms on the ground floor. You're not supposed to be here. Gain access to the study. It appears that in his rush to answer his wife's shouting, Lord Denison forgot to lock his study behind him. I should be quick. I doubt he'll be ha happy to find me here. A small handheld telescope, presumably for surveying his lordship's vast property. Only one drawer is unlocked. It contains some blueprints and documents. Horrible green color again. This looks like it has barely seen any use. I get the impression that Lord Denison prefers solitude. Books, adore books about uh, legal matters and geography. Locked filing cabinet, probably containing land registry details and other certification. Can't open it. Lord Denison is writing a letter to Chief Constable in the nearest city. Books detailing land ownership from the Doomsday Book up to the 14th century. I have no reason to want these. Fascinating. In this blueprint, there is a door in one room opened by switches underneath musical instruments in another room. It's an intricate design with a transition su transmission system underneath the flooring. Sign appears to be a prototype. I wonder if something like this was actually built. I've never seen anything like it. Another document acknowledges the existence of a foul substance in the lake that has been discoloring the local flora. I wonder what that's about. Another document acknowledges the existence of foul... Oh, that's everything. Okay. An old-fashioned quill... Either his lordship is resistant to using modern pens or is hard to get a hold of them out here so far away from civilization. The magnifying glass could definitely come useful. I'll return it later. Uh, although I appreciate the number of similar anonymous tips you have received and quite large, I assure you that nothing goes on here without my knowledge. More reassurances, nothing to be concerned about, asking about the chief constable's wife, and mention of a large donation to be something in the near future. Decision time. It doesn't take much reading between the lines to see that Lord Denison is bringing, bribing the police chief. What shall you do with this letter? Take the letter, but make a copy to put it in its place. Your decision has been recorded. 
Complete a history of titles and deeds in Britain. Legal battles. As an architect, I only have to concern myself with the buildings themselves, not the legal wrangling over estates, so I have no need for this sort of book. A terrible green color. Branch bronze candelabra, recently polished by the looks of it. Bronze clad bronze candelabra, recently polished. Is that everything? Uh, what can I do with a magnifying glass? So if we can find the sheet music, we can open up the door in there. doing strikingly macabre there's a box of matches in the velvet line drawer I could uh, could come in useful I'll take it that won't do me any good I'm not going to go around randomly trying to set things on fire. It's a lit gas lamp. You're not just lighting things on fire. I'm not going to carry a bulky oil lamp. Okay. There's no one here. I'd better use this opportunity to investigate the room when I have the chance. Can't help myself. I must know what's inside. Full British Army uniform. The collar has both a, a star and a crown, indicating a colonel. There is also an Enfield rifled musket, which has seen plenty of action. Ah, there are some medals here, including the Crimea medal. Whoever this chest belonged to was a highly decorated officer. Final piece of the puzzle. A communique to the widow of Colonel Arthur Fitzpatrick, hero of the Crimean War. He died in 1857, according to the Indian, uh, during the Indian Rebellion. Lady Charlotte must be the widow of Arthur Denison. Her heart must have been well and truly broken. Below the painter's signature, someone has written what seems to be a series of tiny letters and pen, so small that I can't make it out uh, with my naked eye. I can make out eight letters, F M L T R L T M. There's also a drawing of a left hand facing down. Do the letters correspond to digits? All right, I think I'll, I've learned everything I can. Should probably leave now. F, M. T, R, T, L, T, M. Let me see if I can do this. Screenshots. Not you. Yeah.
As this is outside Lady Charlotte's room, I presume this is her drawer. She mentioned something about it all being in the fingers. Perhaps there's something in that, given that there are five switches. Right. Am I doing this right? T. M. That wasn't right. Um, it says pointing down. Is it going the other way? So let's see. B, e, C, D, E, F. Hmm. All right. I think I've got it. So we've got forefinger, middle, little finger, thumb, ring finger, little finger, thumb, middle. That did it. There's a book about runes in this drawer. I'm not sure why, I'm, but I'm convinced it must be important. I'm going to borrow it. There's a page containing Anglo-Saxon runes and their modern day equivalent. Some are highlighted. It's all in the runes. Find the book of runes. Do we have that just permanently? We do, okay. I can hear Lord Dennison talking reassuringly to his wife. He speaks with a gentle yet firm authority. Every so often he tells her that he wants to return to his study, but she becomes hysterical at the thought of him leaving. The ruins on the pillar are the same as the ones in the book. I shall have a closer look. The runes are not simply carved into the stone. Each one is uh, separately embossed. Runes on the pillar are the same as the ones in the book. I shall have a closer look. All right, so we have... E... H... T... M... That must have been the wrong combination of runes. Oh, do we need a word? Some of the letters are highlighted. There's a page containing Anglo-Saxon runes and their modern day equivalent. Some are highlighted. So, all right, I'm not sure what you want from me. Uh, open. Oh. P E N. A secret compartment is opened, revealing an iron key. I've taken it. I've taken the opportunity to return the book to where I found it. I don't want to carry it around needlessly. All right. Um. Uh, iron key. Already got that one. Key doesn't fit. I wonder if Jaws is awake now. I can't hear that awful snoring anymore. Is is it that time already? I say, please don't tell his lordship that I was half rats again. Don't worry, my good man. Your secret is safe with me. I am much obliged to you. Think nothing of it. Apparently this is a painting of the famous Russian author Dmitry Suhorchin. His most celebrated work is Felony and Retribution. Large painted cabinet for storing clothes and other essentials. Giles' case, probably some alcohol if he has any spirit. Luxurious double bed made with varnished uh, varnish pine. Q. 
key doesn't fit. You go to you. Key doesn't fit here. Is it somewhere else outside the house? I saw her hands moving and thought she might have something to say. Sorry. You can unlock this with the iron key. This purple plant is everywhere. My employment left me time enough to study such things, but as, as it is, I have no idea what this point is. Despite the situation, you find yourself fascinated by this plant and think about taking a sample for when you manage to find your family and return home. Uh, your decision has been recorded. Can unlock this. Key fits into the lock I found in the hollow, and a secret door opens. The cave inside is very dark. I'll need a lamp and the means to light it. Hey, remember when I said to take that lamp earlier and you didn't? I will need an oil lamp to enter the cave Francesca showed me. I better take it. It's lit. With the lamp and the means lighted, I may now enter the cave. Doesn't need to be lit. Okay. As soon as the doors open, I am assailed by a foul stench such that I had never assaulted my nose before. However, I do recognize that smell. It is the smell of death. What? What's that? Moving over there? Another body? Who's there? Am I hallucinating? Coming out of a daze, I stand just inside the doorway of the secret cave with shaking hands. I light the oil lamp. I look around in horror. What I see is every bit as unsettling as the vision I, I just had, but this time it is undeniably terrifyingly real. I must get away. The horror, get inside the cave. Two men and women all have evidence of whip marks and strangulation. One has large puncture marks as if stabbed all over. Two bodies are laid out as lovers. Goodness knows what disease could be harboring there, quite apart from the impro impropriety of touching decaying corpses. Alright. Using my lamp to peer further into the cave, I can see more dead bodies, a couple dozen or more. Evidently, some of these bodies have been here for a long time, although scraps of flesh indicate that perhaps scavengers are more to blame than decay. The damage of some skulls suggests the use of a sharp weapon. I'm not about to pick up any bones, although... Wait, I think I can see something glinting amongst them. It's the locket. I wonder who it belonged to. There's a picture of a girl on it. I've taken it. Can I look at it? I guess not. Um. You said something about secrets. The house harbors a hidden chapel, which I believe contains a special Bible, a priceless heirloom of my family. Do you want me to try and find the heirloom? I'd be most grateful. There's a lever inside the vase at the end of the second floor. If you pull it, a hidden panel will slide back, opening a crawlway which leads into the chapel. I'm certain the Bible is in there somewhere. Presumably, you've looked in the chapel. Why are you so certain the heirloom is in the chapel? My father told me, but he had died before it was real to me, the secret of how to find it. I'm sure no one else knows about this chapel, so it must still be in there. Do you have any ideas about how to find the heirloom? I do remember hearing him recite Revelation 6, uh, 6, 1 through 8 on several occasions. Revelation book 6, one, uh, verse 1 through 8 uh, on several occasions. Something about horsemen and disasters, which I couldn't understand. Maybe that had something to do with it. I say, you're a lot smarter than you lead people to believe, I think. I put it down to my simple diet, vegetables and water only, like Daniel, Shadrach, Misich, and Abednego in ancient Babylon. People are less guarded around simple folks, so it can pay to be, appear to be more foolish in their eyes. It's Britain, so the second floor is actually the third floor. Got it. 
As Gary said, there's a lever almost at the bottom of the space on the inside. When I pull it, a secret hatch opens in the eastern wall. This is curious. It looks to me like this was once a priest hole, uh, but it's been expanded quite a bit. Catholics were persecuted during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, so great homes and mansions owned by Catholics often had these hiding places for when their places were searched. I don't recall ever seeing one converted like this. The room itself is a conflict of styles, too, with Spartan furnishings more akin to Puritan ideals, but the statue and the stained glass window are extravagant given the location. I keep feeling something on my finger. I'm trying to get it off, but it's not going off. There's a thick layer of dust on everything. I doubt it has been used for many years, maybe even over a century. There's a King James Bible. Not very old in plain sight. This can't be what Gary was looking for. Let's see. Gary verses, Gary's verses were Revelation 6, uh, 1 through 8. Revelation 6, 2. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. It's supposed to have seven candles, but there's only one in place. The design reminds me of a spider. And a pale horse, and his name that sat upon him was Death. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Inscription says that this is Jesus in the form of Michael and the, Ar the Archangel. This is Jesus in the form of Michael the Archangel. An image of an angel. The window has some sort of faint backlighting. It's not made to be visible from the outside. Just go in. You've got the thing. You can do the thing. There's just a single pew at the back of the chapel. Let's see. A white. A white horse uh, had a bow, a crown. Red sword. Black. Balances. Pale. Was the beasts. Mortar has crumbled in a couple of places. This place clearly hasn't been very cared for over the years. I wonder how many people know of its existence. How are you enjoying your poetry book? It was so good. I adore Wordsworth. Are you feeling calmer now? Yes, thank you. Poetry is like a gentle caress in my soul. Have you lived here long? Since I married Charles eight years ago when I was expecting the first of my children. You had children? We had two boys, but both died. That's why I'm such a wreck. I'm sorry. I really don't wish to talk about it. I told you earlier about my own family having gone missing. Have you seen them? Sadly not. I would dearly love to help you find them. I can't bear the thought of you losing your children as I lost mine. Can you tell me anything about the servants? I have a sw soft spot for Franny. I found her on the streets of London when I was visiting one day. It broke my heart to see her, so I brought her back. Poor mite. What about the rest of the servants? Oh, they're okay. I don't trust Giles very much, but he's fine when he's sober. Molly's a dear girl, and Gary is a kind soul. I think that fish gave, uh, you gave me was off. I had the strangest vision since eating it. Of a ghoulish-looking face the minute I was about to enter a cave. 
Goodness me, no, your lordship. It was fresh, only caught yesterday afternoon. Was anything else off? No, your lordship. It was uh, leftovers, but only from dinner, which was very late last night. Has anyone else had strange churns after eating the fish from the lake? Possibly. There's often talk of seeing things that aren't there. I've never had it, nor Franny, or nor Gary, that I know of. Does everyone eat the fish? Not me, your lordship. Can't stand the taste. Franny doesn't like it either, and Gary is allergic. So everyone who has eaten the fish has had hallucinations. I couldn't say for absolute certain, but it does seem that way, your lordship. Is this, uh, the girl on the walk at Maisie? Let me look at it. Yes, yes it is. This is Maisie. I dread to ask where you found it. I'm afraid I found it in a cave along with many bodies. I wish I could say I'm surprised, but it is, is, is as is... It is as I have long feared. May I keep the locket? I give Francesca the locket. When I get out of this place, uh, will you come with me and bear witness to what you know? I will, sir. Thank you so much for giving me the uh, closure about Maisie. Knowing she is dead is terrible, but suspecting without knowing was worse. All right. So what does that do for us? According to Molly, people who fish from the lake may see things. I really need to see what's down there. If only I could find a way to safely dive underwater and explore. Could use the hose to breathe underwater for a couple of minutes, but I would need some way to keep one end above water. This would be a good way to keep the one end of the hose above water, but need something to attach the hose to the wheel. Can't use the spanner. Don't know why I thought that would be a good idea. So I need something else. Floorbrider must have been punished for something or even tortured. How terrible. His body is cold to the touch. I have no wish to inspect it in greater detail. I won't budge any further. There's a piece of steel wire sticking out of the crumbling mortar here. Can't quite get the steel wire out with my bare hands. After bashing a little of the mortar, I am able to pull out the wire quite easily. I can now attach something to the wheel with the wire. I'll attach one end of the hose of the wheel and breathe through the other end. It won't be comfortable, but it will enable me to see what's down there. Time to dive in, I reckon. A shimmering glow emerges from the crack. It looks as if a substance from the barrel is interacting with the water and creating a bright luminescence. I'd rather keep my distance. It looks dangerous. This is something for the authorities to deal with. This is a document wallet of some kind, possibly waterproof. I think it's been overlaid with gutta percha. It is lodged under a rock. The rock isn't too heavy. I've managed to dislodge it and retrieve the wallet from underneath. A number of barrels have crashed onto the lake surface. Must have managed to remain intact, but one is broken. Barrels are too heavy to move, and I am reluctant to touch the one that's glowing. Who knows what direct contact would do to me? Alright, is there anything else? There are documents in the wallet. They speak of an experimental chemical said to induce various psychotrophic and hallucinogenic results in the vast number of test subjects. Those tested were all convicts, convicts and were disposed of afterwards. The document suggests that the plan was to expose the water sources of the primary cities of the American rebels with the substance, with the aim of letting them destroy themselves before reclaiming it for Great Britain. Somehow the shipment got sidetracked here, probably on the way to Liverpool docks. Clearly, whoever was behind this plan on creating havoc and panic across the whole country. I report this to the authorities when I get home. Is that all?
I have found something in the lake that is polluting the waters, and for those people who eat the fish caught in the lake, they're mines. I would explain many things. I am thankful that I do not eat fish myself, although seeing the increasing madness through the, some through sane eyes without the power to take action was terrible in itself. Here we go now. I have evidence that something in the lake is contaminated. Nothing would surprise me. This place is cursed. You really think this place is cursed? Since I moved here, both my children died. That is enough for me to view it as cursed. Yet there is something here of value. What do you mean there is something here of value? Sir, I feel you have earned my trust. You both recovered my poetry book and trusted me with the information in these documents. I would like to enlist your help in finding the Book of Secrets. Book of Secrets? What is that? My ancestor kept a diary of his experiences in the New World, where he had what he described as a spiritual awakening. He called it the Book of Secrets. So it's the problem. I have never been able to open it. I do not trust anyone except maybe Franny, but she is always busy. Please, sir, I beg you. I feel Lady Edith may know something about it, but she talks in riddles, and frankly, she scares me. Why do you not just chop the chest open with an axe? I fear that by doing so, I may damage the precious books inside. What makes you think Lady Denison knows how to open the chest containing your ancestor's book? She says strange things sometimes. Well, all the time, really. But sometimes she talks of a French pirate. And I wonder if she's talking about my ancestor. It could just be nonsense. How do I get into the secret room? There are two small buttons inside the drawer and the dresser to the right of the mirror. Press both buttons three times in quick succession, and a trap door will open next to the left side of the bed. What? Dresser to the right of the mirror. Goodbye. Found evidence that the water in the nearby lake is polluted with a dangerous substance. Balderdash, just who are you to meddle in a business? I'm sorry, I did not wish to cause offense. Away with you before I give you a damn good thrashing. There's a contaminant in the lake affecting people's mind. A moment of terrible clarity has come upon me. I must show you something. Come with me. I feel I must tell you this while my mind is clear. My sorrow so often overwhelms me. And if what you say about the water in the lake is true, my mind is muddled by that as well. I have always felt that the children's disappearance may have been caused by Charles. I hid this bottle here in the children's bedroom where nobody would ever find it. Here, take it. Bottle of arsenic? How dreadful. But how can you be sure who used it? Charles was a strict man, but not cruel, so I am told. I do not work for them. At the, I did not work for them at the time, but after moving here, he changed and got angry very quickly. Water being contaminated would perhaps explain this. He got so angry at little Jonathan and Arthur, they became scared of him. Then I found his bottle. I... Please try to stay calm, Penelope. Try and stay in control. You're right, sir. I must remain strong or I'll lose my mind. What would you have me do with this bottle? I thought perhaps it could be used as evidence. I, I don't really know. I'll see what I can do. Very elegant chest of drawers made with oak. Very solid. Perhaps not completely childproof, but then nothing is... Painting of a popular music hall entertainer, Tre Trepidanos? Singer, juggler, and comedian, all rolled into one. Pictured here in a typically flamboyant outfit. William would have loved this as a toy. Uh, Black Panthers are his favorite animals. Can't imagine there would be anything useful in here. Knitted doll. My Sophie has one and loves it uh, to bits. Won't go anywhere without it. This one looks like it's barely been touched. Are we... The silhouettes of the tree branches look rather ominous in the dark. Are we the uh, the lord of the house? Ah, this brings back mem this brings back memories. My brother and I had a bunk bed when we were little. Now that the room is vacant, I'm free to explore it. A swiveling vanity mirror. 
There's some sheet music on the other side of the mirror. I bet it's what Isabel was looking for. I wonder why Penelope had it. I've already taken the sheet music. An area to store under things and small uh, clothing. Where are these two buttons to the side of the mirror? Guess let's go do the sheep music. I don't know why I thought that would be a good idea. I have found the sheet music you were looking for. I can play the piano a little. Would you like to accompany me on the harp? Thank you. I will let you know when I feel ready to play again soon. I found evidence that the lake has a dangerous substance leaking into it. Oh my goodness, really? That would explain so much strange behavior. The family have the strange persecution syndrome. They have always convinced that they have enemies everywhere. When I talk to the authorities, I must make sure they agree to help get Molly out of this place. Still confused about the dresser next to the mirror. In what room is that? But you do eat the fish that have ingested the contaminant. True, but in my case, the whiskey protects my gastric organs. I don't think that's how whiskey works. Does the arsenic help us at all? Pulpit. There's something that looks slightly wrong about the back. The wood grain runs differently to the rest of the pulpits. Fortunately, the screwdriver, although small, is too large to fit these screws. Using the nail file as a makeshift screwdriver, I remove the false panel and reveal a most unusual safe. Instead of a dial which could be turned, there are eight icons. Four horses of different colors and four disparate, uh, disparate items that can be pushed down. Go away. Four buttons with a drawing of horse. In total, there are eight. All right. So. White horse. Uh, a bow and a crown. Red horse. Great sword. Black horse. Balances. A pale horse. So 
So we've got white horse with the bow. We've got red horse with the greatsword. Uh, we've got black horse with the balances. And then we've got pale horse with death. The safe opens inside of something I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. A complete Gutenberg Bible. These are immensely rare and must be worth a fortune. This has to be the heirloom Gary was talking about. I will take it to him. Sacred text. Find Gary's heirloom. Here it is. I found your heirloom. I can't believe it. You actually did it. Thank you so much. This will set me up for life if I can find a buyer. At a token of thanks, as a token of thanks, please take this key. Glad I could help. This key you just gave me. What is it for? It's the key to the third bedroom next to Charlotte's room. I like to keep clear of the grand lords and ladies of this house, whatever they may say. They don't like me at all. What could I want with this key? There's a secret room underneath it. I have been in it once when I was a young child. I can't even remember who took me there, but I'll never forget what was in it. So, what was in it? Amazing treasures from the Caribbean. Pirate treasures, I think. An oyster with a real pearl. Bones made into a necklace. And most amazingly, a skull made out of crystal. How'd I get into the secret room? Alas, that I could not tell you. I never knew the secret. There may be someone in the mansion who knows, or perhaps you will have to work it out for yourself. Great treasures await if you do. I have no need of any treasures, but this key should come in handy. I must search every room in this mansion. I found evidence that something in the lake uh, water is affecting people's minds. I think it gets into the fish, so anyone eating them gets affected. Ha! Who would have thought the fish allergy would actually come in handy? Look, I'm planning on getting out of here anyway. We'll try to join you after you find your folks. I hear a commotion nearby. Standing outside the third bedroom is Edith, gesticulating frantically with Charles, Charlotte, and Alfred trying in vain to calm her down. Come downstairs, mother. I will play some music to calm you down. No, no. I won't go anywhere. Leave me alone. Unhand me. It's no good. We can't make her in the state. We can't move her in the state. Hmm. I need to get into that bedroom. Maybe I can find something that will calm Edith down and they will move on. Charlotte's words indicate that music may soothe her. Unfortunately, the music won't play since there's no handle to crank. Where would we find a crank? Now is the perfect time to play music. It fits quite well and I am able to play the music. I will take this to Lady Den Denison. I give the music box to Lady Denison and it does indeed calm her down, although the family doesn't appear terribly grateful and Charles gives me a very odd look. They all retire back to their respective bedrooms. The key fits. I've unlocked the door. What are you doing here, fellow? Away with you, lurking outside locked doors. Your behavior is most suspicious. Pardon me, sir. I didn't mean to upset you. Sir, do you recognize this? What is this nonsense? A bottle of arsenic. Do you recognize it? No. I mean, why should I? Still, it's not the sort of thing you should be carrying around. Far too dangerous. Let me take it from you and dispose of it. Charles returns to his bedroom, having taken the bottle of poison. Small box for jewels or makeup. Box contains small trinkets and makeup, nothing useful to me. I open the drawer to the right in the mirror and find two small buttons inside. After I press them both three times, as Isabel described, a section of the floor slides back at the corner to reveal a trapdoor leading down into a smaller room. Painting of a campfire in the wilderness shining dully called the final blaze as I enter the room I look around in amazement it is full of all sorts of treasures and curios from the new world these artifacts would uh, not look out of place in an exhibition in the South Kensington Museum an, an opened oyster complete with its pearl an amazing product of nature some boxes that are sealed tight from the odor I think they contain exotic spices this must be the ch chest which contains the Book of Secrets. It has a strange locking me mechanism I've never seen before. A peculiar locking mechanism with letters must be rearranged into a word. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no idea what that word might be. Whatever the word is, it's 17 characters long, uh, precluding guesswork. 
17 characters long. Authentic Caribbean grog, produce of the Scuffle Island. A skull that appears to be made from some sort of crystal. What purpose does it serve for the natives who made it, I wonder? I remember reading the Mexican government had issued a plea for any artifacts taken from its territory to be returned. Should I do something about this when I get out of here? Form the Me Mexican Embassy in London about the Crystal Skull. What a monstrous visage of some horrible significance in black magic, I, I assume. Painting of a boy in vibrant hues of scarlet. Sealed box. Can't open in besides the Book of Secrets is what I'm after, not tobacco. There's no way I'm getting these open. Anyway, what I was is in the chest. His bones are too big to be human. Just has a complicated locking mechanism with no visible fixings. The screwdriver will not help me to open it. Can't file that. Uh, 17 characters. As I step into the room, Lady Edith addresses me. Not just anybody can converse with me. To unlock my speech, the French maid knows the key. Now please take leave. You were once married to Colonel Arthur P Fitzpatrick. Ah, the life of a Murray wife. Married young to a dashing young officer. Widowed young to a hero of the realm I barely knew because he was always away fighting for his country. How long ago was that? Oh, I don't know. The years flew by like an unbridled river. My memory fails me at times. It was long ago, anyway. I have proof that something poisons lake and the fish in it. Oh, good heavens, my dear fellow, you have such fanciful ideas. You don't, did not even look at the documents properly. When you get to my age, young man, you will find that you can quickly discern between fact and fiction, which that document clearly is. It appears Charles has locked the door to his bedroom. I hear him pacing about. I better not disturb him any further. I can't believe the screwdriver. Hello, Francesca. Lady Edith will not speak to me and said something about the maid knowing how to unlock her speech. I assume she meant you? Please, sir, keep away from that woman. Nothing good can come from a conversation with her. Then you will not tell me what the key is? For your own sake, no, I shall not. I'll have to ask you again for Lady Edith's key. After the good you have done to me, I will, against my better judgment. It's some kind of strange defense mechanism she has. Unless someone says the correct rhyme, she simply won't speak to them at all. What is the rhyme I need to say to Lady Edith? Although I have come to you as a stranger, I wish to confirm uh, that I pose no danger. I have learned your verse, Lady Edith. Although I have come to you as a stranger, I wish to confirm that I pose no danger. I feel I can trust you since you know this verse, so please go ahead if you wish to converse. I'm so sorry that I startled you earlier, De Lady Denison. Don't worry, my dear. That is really okay, for too easily startled I am today. Is there anything you can tell me about your female servants? Two young maids we have, just like sisters they are. A nurse we have too, but her mind wanders far. Is there anything you can tell me about your male servants? The butler will probably drink till he's dead. Our footman has nothing but air in his head. How are you enjoying the music box? The tune makes me think of a land far away, a melody sweet to my soul it does play. What can you tell me about your husband? Lord Alfred is indeed the love of my life. Truly blessed I am that I became his wife. Do you get an on okay with Charles and Isabel? Charles showed poor judgment when he fell for a French, but he did far worse when he married the wench. You don't approve of Charles marrying a French woman? She's not of pure blood and so cannot be trusted, if only my son had not for her lusted. 
What do you mean about Isabel not being of pure blood? Though her appearance and charms are not shady, though her appearance and charms are not shoddy, the blood of a pirate runs through her body. She has an ancestor who is a pirate? Under a rock by the shimmering lagoon, the French pirate's code can be seen at the full moon. Under a rock by the shimmering lagoon. French pirate's code. When the full moon is high in the midnight sky, a rock by our lakeside will tell you no lie. Have you seen a woman and two children lost in the woods or on the mansion tonight? A wife and two children, seen them I have not. Here in the wilds, we don't see strangers a lot. Do you remember an accident that led to the fire at the, in the stables? Angry shouting, lamp knocked over, oil went splash. The horses and stables went up in a flash. Did you dislike the ostler for some reason? Jason held many views above his station. He thought not too highly of our great nation. Was there a police investigation? Away from most civilization we are, detectives, sel seldoms detectives seldom want to venture so far. The lake contains some kind of substance that is affecting people's behavior. The waters of our lake are beautifully pure. If you'd lived here for years, you too would be sure. Look, I have evidence here of what I'm saying about the lake water. Though impressive words this document contains, I believe not your claims of addling our brains. We shall speak again at another time. Whom do I have the pleasure of making the acquaintance of? I am Alfred Dennison, Lord of the Mansion. The Dennisons have a proud heritage going back for centuries. Have you lived here all your life? Indeed I have, born and raised here, trained to handle the estate and all financial matters. It has been a good life. I'm very sorry I upset your wife. Is she okay? Thank you, my good man. She is fine now. She gets the jitters very easily, I'm afraid, especially when the moon is full under the sky. Her mother was the same. Would you say your staff are reliable? The few we have left are decent enough. Uh, the few we have left are a decent enough lot for servants. One can't expect them to understand the subtleties of life. They rarely let me down in a way that causes tangible loss. Have you noticed any strange behavior by anyone in the house? My good fellow, there's nothing but strange behavior here. My dear wife is the only one officially labeled with a mental disease, but she's far from the only one with adult senses. Could you elaborate on the strange behavior you've witnessed? I simply don't have the time. Have you seen any strangers around here tonight? A woman and a boy and a girl? Apart from yourself, I have seen no strangers this night. There is a reason to believe the fish in the lake contain a dangerous substance that is affecting the minds of those who eat them. What poppycock? I've never heard such an outrageous accusation. I'm not making things up. I'm trying to help you. There is nothing wrong with lake water, fellow. It has been perfectly fine for centuries. I have proof of what I'm saying. Look at these documents. Bah, these are merely the ramblings of malcontent. Nothing to take seriously. Nice ace. Shame about the color. In our house, a vase like this would definitely have flowers in it, though. A serene lakeside scene. Small cabinet made of the finest mahogany. Very expensive and very beautiful. I have no intention of rummaging through their private lungs. I think this is Lady Dennison when she was a young woman. She was very beautiful, if this is a realistic light likeness. Thunderstorm above a barren landscape. A somewhat interesting choice for a bedroom painting. Home of smaller items of clothing for his lordship and her ladyship. Huge fitted wardrobes are on the other side of the bedroom. A hand-carved walnut trufted seedy? Seti? Uh, let's go check out the lagoon. This must be the rock Edith River to in her riddle. A rock by the lake when the moon is high will tell no lie. I should inspect it. Pushing the wreck slightly, a plate with a jumble of letters is revealed. The moonlight highlights specific letters. I can make out two names written as one. Marguerite Christel. I shall commit, this to I shall commit them to memory. Marguerite Christel is 17 letters long. Uh, could be his daughter's name, or a reference to the pearl in the crystal skull, or possibly even both. I arrange the letters accordingly, and the chest opens. I find a diary, or a book of secrets, inside the chest. I should take it to Isabel. I have managed to open the chest and get the diary you wanted. Oh, thank you so much. I don't know how I can even ever repay you. I wish I could help you find your family. Samuel, wait a minute. I've made up my mind. I'm so grateful for all you've done for me. I'm ready to play the du duet again, but this time not to soothe my fragile nerves, but to rejoice. Will you accompany me? I hope it's not too difficult. I have to admit that I have not played the piano for some time. Fear not. It is a simple ditty. My skills as a harpist are not immaculate. Here's the music for the piano section. Thank you.
What was that? What was that? I heard a noise from the east, I think. It sounded like a heavy stone object moving. Hmm. I heard nothing, I'm afraid. The music has an extraordinary calming effect on me. I'll investigate. Stay here in case there's any danger. Danger? Why on earth would there be any danger? Just stay here, please. This is quite remarkable. A secret door has opened at the back of one of the pillars. Whether or not the music has activated the door's mechanism, I cannot tell. There's a ladder leading down. I should explore. In the dim light, I just about make out a ladder leading down. Even in my haste, I make sure to descend the ladder slowly. While my eyes are still adjusting to the low light level, I notice the thick smell of bleach amid the odor of mold. I wonder what they're having to clean to use so much of a cleaning chemical. A torch flickers, but my eyes are still adjusting. I can see bars and chains. In one corner of the room, I can see what appears to be an Iron Maiden. And then I see... My family, my darling wife, and children are caged like zoo animals. After an emotional reunion, despite the bars that separate us, the children's faces began to transition from terror to hope. And Steph, despite being in, ob in obvious pain, puts on a brave face. Oh, Samuel, you have found us. I knew you wouldn't give up. I'll only be happy when I get you out of here. What happened? We got lost, and a woman told us uh, she would help us. She gave us something to eat and drink, which must have been drugged, because the next thing I know, we're trapped here. That must have been Charlotte. Whatever her name was, she has had us duped. Then more people came. More people? Yes, there were. Oh no. What is it? They, they're up there. Ah, I see you managed to find your family. You should never have come here. Now that you have, we can't allow you to leave. I don't know what you mean, but I can assure you we'll never mention you to anyone. We have seen the visions. I know in the world outside, people are jealous of the Denison heritage. Seek to take our home from us, make us, make it their own. Only Isabel is innocent. She lives in limbo in this mansion. I had just been swimming in the lake when I saw your wife and children, and straight away I knew they were agents of our enemies, spies. There is something in the water affecting your minds. You must believe me. I didn't want to believe you were a spy, but the more you protest, the more I am certain of it. We mean you no harm. We did not even know you live here. Speak no more, for you have been judged, and upon this matter we will not be budged. A secret door is slammed. Daddy, are you going to get us out of this place? You're going to get us out of this horrible place, aren't you? Yes, Sophie, I'll get you out of here. If anyone can do it, our father can. I appreciate the vote of confidence, son. Now, let me take a look around and see what I can do here. Uh, down below, gain access to the basement. The whip is covered in blood and skin fragments, some of it fresh. Maybe I can make use of this. I've heard all sorts of hideous stories about these devices, but there seems to be a lack of evidence on as to them really being used as torture devices. However, there is blood in this one. There's something about some of the spikes I can't quite put my finger on. However, I need to free my family before I see if this has any significance. My beloved ch children are trapped in this cage. Wait until they're a bit older and then tell them the truth. My daring wife is a prisoner in this uh, dastardly cage. I must find a way to free her. Try picking the lock with the nail file, but as I've never tried it before, I'm not surprised when I fail. That won't do any good. Just most banner is very versatile, but not that versatile. Surely not. Helpless victims could be manacled to the walls with these. Torchlight may be more mainly to terrify those trapped here even more. The torchlight may be there mainly to terrify those trapped here even more, or just for the benefit of one or more sadists who come down here. Although the hinges of the store are quite rusty, they are still strong enough to withstand uh, my efforts to force the door open. Uh, you said they were rusty. Go ahead and file them. Justable fan spanner is versatile, but not that versatile. Uh, then I don't know what you want from me. I throw myself at the cage door, resulting in a bruised shoulder, but I think the door is loosened just a little. I do notice that the hinges are a little rusty from the constant condensation. While not obviously weak, perhaps they're not quite as strong as they once were. Hmm. 
Use the... Having bush, bashed the door in earlier, I wrap the whip around the bar and pull the rusty hinges just enough for stuff to squeeze through. We do the same with the other door. Pull uh, together and release our children. Now, how can we get out of here? I've already forced the door open. Now I have to find a way to get out of this place. Should investigate the contraption first. Some of the spikes are shorter than the others. Their tips are chipped off. Try pushing some of the flat spikes, and I think there is some movement, but I don't have the strength to move them just with my hands. Using the adjustable spanner to tightly grip each flat spike, I manage to force back each one. When the last one is pushed in, the Iron Maiden slowly slides to the side, revealing a passageway. I tell my family to follow me closely, with Steph and I holding their hands tightly. I tell them to close their eyes and hold their noses. I have a horrible feeling that I know where this passage leads to. As I, as I suspect, the passage hidden by the Iron Maiden leads into the cave. William and Sophie keep their eyes shut tight as I instruct them to. Steph doesn't comment on what she sees. After all she has been through, it isn't that much of a surprise. Finally, we get out of the terrible place and into the fresh air, try to decide which direction to head in. Sounds of snapping twig. Who's there? Oh, thank goodness you escaped. We didn't know where you'd gone, our lo your lordship, and we decided to get out in as far away from here as possible. Contact the police and get them to search for you. Oh, it's you. What a relief. I thought the family uh, had escaped and were going to wreak their revenge on us. Escaped? Yes, I caught sight of them coming out of the pool house. Not sure what they were doing in there, but I followed them. They all went into the dining room and I locked the door on them. I see. Another key they didn't know you had, I presume. Yes, I have quite a collection, in fact. Uh, then I scampered. Scarpered? Then I scampered. It was always my intention to leave the mansion at the earliest rational moment once I had found my heirloom. Or, as it turned out, once you had found it. I assume you're as eager to get out of here as I am. If you come to, if you come with me, I can lead you to the nearest town. It's quite a trek, but I have a map and a compass. Stick with me, and you'll get out. There, uh, you'll get there, okay? We would be most obliged. Is Francesca not with you? Yes, we wouldn't leave without Franny. I'm here, sir. Those of us unaffected by the madness uh, join forces to escape. I only wish we could have been more of more help to you and your family, but you seem to well disappear. We couldn't find you anywhere. It's a long story. Let's get away from this place. Avert your eyes, children. Gary, did we really have to come this way? Sorry, I should have mentioned that I intend to give Paul a proper burial. It's the very least he deserves. So, here you all are. Isabel, did you decide to come with us? May I ask what you are doing with Colonel Fitzpatrick's, uh, infield? The rifle owned by Lady Charlotte's late husband. Good idea. We might need protection. Oh, my dear sweet innocent girl, you are too naive. I shall almost, uh, rue sending you back to your maker. My dear woman, I know you are consumed with grief about your children, but... Grief? You think it is grief that I feel most? No, it is anger. Intense anger and hate. Yet more French blood spilled at the hands of the English. Even worse, it was your, their own father. I should never have married him. I have known for years that the family was doing what the family was doing, but pretended not to be so wrapped up in my grief that I had no idea what was going on. My scheme worked, too. One after another was killed. I was satisfied that the blood debt was being paid. How? How could you? You should understand more than anyone. How many French lives have been lost in, to wars in the English? What is happening here is merely a different kind of war. I view myself more English than French. I was only five when my parents moved over here, and after five more, they were dead. Ungrateful girl, who was it that saved you from their life on the streets? If you are more English than French, then I mourn not your demise. No, don't shoot her. When Isabel fired the shot, Molly pushed Francesca away and took the bullet herself. Before anyone could react, Penelope appeared, took the spade we'd been about to use to dig Paul's grave, and swung it at Isabel's head. I suspect Penelope had decided that Isabel was to blame for what happened to the children, either directly or indirectly, but we never found out for sure. From that point onwards, Penelope refused to speak. Under the circumstances, she was not sent to prison, but rather to an asylum. I have heard these establishments are starting to become places of healing rather than torment. For Isabel's sake, I hope so. Molly was severely injured, but eventually made a full recovery. Francesca never left her side. They were as inseparable as twin sisters. Gary disappeared almost as soon as we reached civilization but reappeared shortly afterwards, a considerably wealthy man. To everyone's surprise, Gary and Francesca married shortly after Molly had recovered, with Molly as the maid of honour. I was both astonished and honoured when Gary wrote to me asking me to be his best man, but he said that finding his heirloom had changed his entire life, so he could think of no better man for the job. 
Did they have best men? When the police turned up at the mansion, Giles answered as if nothing had happened. After the authorities had no more questions for him, he simply vanished and was never heard of again. I suspect he made his way back to Scotland and found a job with a family there, or perhaps as a taster at a whiskey distillery. Despite everything, the Denison family could still afford the best lawyers in the land, but even they couldn't stop the remainder of the family from being committed to a lunatic asylum. Although they had committed such atrocities, I felt some sympathy for them, as the corruption that had entered into them was not of their own making. Isabel, once her head injury from Penelope's attack had healed, joined them. As for the lake, it was said that military and government officials have been swarming around it ever since. I sincerely hope that this is to make the area completely safe and not to obtain the substance in those barrels for some Despite the terror they endured, William and Sophie grew up to be fine young people and our friends often commented that they were a credit to Steph and myself. All of us sometimes have bad dreams but at least you can wake up from those. Based on the decisions I made, my life was affected in different ways. Scientists at the Royal Botanical Gardens at Kew Study, the purple shrub I brought back from the lakeside, find trace elements of the substance from the lake. Extra precautions are taken by the officials at the lake. The missing Samuel Pepys diary page becomes an exhibit at the South Kensington Museum, later renamed the Victoria and Albert Museum. Literature professors across the country desperately scramble for the privilege of studying it. I give the letter from Lord Denison's study as evidence and the family fail to notice that the letter in the study is my copy until it is too late for their defense lawyers to take any action. Investigation is launched which uncovers that the police chief has accepted bribes from multiple sources. The police chief and several accompl accomplices are imprisoned and I become a national hero. I inform the Mexican embassy about the crystal skull found in the secret room in the mansion. They are most grateful but their legal battle to get the artifact back drags on for decades. I tell my children the whole truth about their horrible ideal ordeal, but I wait until they are a little older. They appreciate my candor, but also giving them extra time to gain the maturity needed to process this information. There were a total of five decision moments throughout the game. Have you come upon them all? Indie Gamer Brits. For a complete breakdown of sound credits, please read the soundcredits.txt file in the game folder. Made in Game Maker Studio 2. This was really well done for a Game Maker Studio game. So that was the corruption within. Um, I got 10 out of 10 achievements. Cool. Uh, so yeah, um, I enjoyed that uh, as a mystery game. Uh, one, um, one thing that I would recommend is the uh, spanner, having a use for it early because we got it fairly quickly uh, and then didn't end up using it for very like much. Uh, we used it like one time in the mansion and then we used it like one time in the basement um so we we just carried it around the whole game and it didn't really do anything um what else uh the um the uh screwdriver working as the crank for the music box it took me forever to figure that out uh if there was kind of a hint about like uh if there was, uh, the flavor text said, um, it needs a crank or something that can wind it. 
Uh, I might have found it earlier. Uh, I didn't figure that out. Um, the uh, the two puzzles. What were they? The there was the rune puzzle and then the um, the finger puzzle. Okay. Uh, those were both really well done. Uh, I had to look at the screenshots that I had made and then I figured out, okay, uh, four finger, middle finger, um, little finger, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then I figured out the open. I just had to stare at it a little bit. Um, those ones were good. They made you think, uh, you didn't have to, uh, you didn't have to go find somebody and talk to them in order to get the, the hint to open them. Um, I think that those two were really good. Uh, I was, um, the, uh, what was it? The chest, the chest in the pirate room. Uh, the fact that you couldn't guess on that one. Uh, I think that, um, a lot of the, the best, uh, I'm trying to think of the word diegetic. A lot of the best puzzles are diegetic puzzles where you put in the thing, you take the guess, you see if you can do it, uh, and then you go find the answer. Uh, you kind of had that thing where it was like uh, you would let somebody uh, test something, you would let somebody do the finger puzzle, uh, but then you would say, okay, we need to find the, the answer to that. Uh, it would have been nice if the, the pirate chest had a better like name, uh, even if it was just crystal or something like that, um, and we could try to guess was it crystal or was it crystal or something like that? Um, and then if we couldn't find it, then we could find the rock. Um, and then that way it would like be like, okay, we know what we need. And then we, we go find the answer and then we find the answer and it snaps into place and we get that um, epiphany. Uh, that's what uh, I feel like the, the puzzles in this game kind of lacked was the epiphany moment. The, Oh, I get it. This goes to this, this goes to this, this goes to this. Um, so the the pirate uh the pirate chest in particular I think really needed that moment of epiphany. Um what else was there? I like the characters, I like the writing, uh the visuals were very good. You did very good uh making pixel art bedrooms that looked lived in. Um everything had a lot of detail. Uh, there were a few times that you alluded to things off screen, like in one of the bedrooms, you're like, there are big wardrobes uh, uh, on the other side of the room, uh, but the the big wardrobes weren't in the, the pixel art. So I don't see why you would allude to them. Um, even if like you wanted to make something about the heavy clothing, you can say the heavy, cl the heavy clothing is stored somewhere else in the mansion, something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the clicking on things multiple times, uh, I really prefer it when you just click on something one time and it gives you everything right then. Uh, that way you don't have to go through clicking everything multiple times trying to see if like something's going to be different. Uh, that's just my preference. Like You don't have to take that from me, uh, but I think that it's a better user experience when you just click on something once and it goes through every, all the information related to it. Uh, and then if you click on it again, it's like, well, there's nothing, nothing else here. Uh, so that way it gives you everything up front and then it tells you that there's nothing left. Uh, a, a, a lot of the objects in this game, they had the things where you had to click on it once and it gave you an overview of what it want, was. Uh, and then you click on it again and it gives you more information and then you click on it again and it gives you more information. Then you click on it again and it gives you something like an item or it gives you an answer or something like that. Um, a conversation piece that you can have with one of the other characters. Uh, I would really prefer if you just clicked on it the once and it gave you those four screens. One, two, three, four. Here's the thing that you need to pro progress. Uh, is there anything else I can think of? Uh, it would be, I know that you do this in, um, in the text of the game. Uh, if, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the main character, if, uh, William commented on their, um, their accents, uh, the maid has a French accent or the, uh, Giles, the Butler has uh, a Scottish accent. 
Um, if there was just like a little bit of flavor text at the beginning of their introduction, uh, the there's a butler at the door. He has a, a light uh, Scottish accent. Uh, there's a maid in the forest. Uh, she has a, a slight French accent. Um, everyone else, I'm assuming, has a British accent except for uh, Isabel. Um, that kind of thing would help me just as I'm going through to visualize what their, their um, or to, to verbalize what their accents are. Uh, and then that way you can differentiate them a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. You had really nice puzzles. Uh, you had really nice um, uh, set designs. Um, a lot of the characters were really uh, well written. Um, yeah. I think that you did a really good job here. There's just like the little the little fixes that I would make. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you again for joining me in the uh, in the night uh, for another night of Strange and Scary Games. Um, I love you. I will see you in the next video. Good night.